still gonna just buy stuff if the crow has anything. Caw! I'm sure he has new stuff. Wow, look, an axe! Guessing that's a yeah, new weapon type. Uh, Super Claws might be good. Maybe better defense. Rugged armor ain't for no one. So, like regular clothes. Big old shield. Well, we have enough money, actually. Yeah, give it to you. Oh, didn't want to go out. Yeah, let's just buy this stuff. Who cares? It's probably all worthless to buy it now. Something we're going to have is going to have an axe and hammer slot. Uh, I'm not going to buy the Warren Blade, though. I will buy... The shield, probably. Give it to you. And accessories might be good. Scale. Bravado badge. Braggart's badge. I don't think anything. Prevents knockouts when HP are high? What? What does that mean? I don't, I honestly do not understand what that means. What are knockouts? Is that like when they run out of time? Whatever. You must be raven mad. Welcome to the circus of value. No chests in here, Mr. Crow. This is a fun little place though. So, oh, I'm, oh god, is he vomiting? Ha ha ha! I will soon compete in the Oasis race. I must practice all I can or shall not win. Woo! Very tiring. I love the little jars are little cows too. I'm sure there are bounties and stuff. Howdy. Welcome. Uh, bounty hunt. Nothing? How dare you. Any errands? Probably not quite many yet. Uh, seen so have an intense. I'm sure I can see them. They're just probably gonna be around. Just the glowy people in the map screen. Not much for me to really worry about. Look, he's running. He has his arms out like a Naruto run. No wonder he's tired. Uh, not you guys. That's just Granny Owl. There's someone brimming with enthusiasm, though. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a beautiful cape, but it's not quite the season. Oh, she likes my cape. I appreciate you. Want to update their outfit with some of our top quality fans? Neato, look at this beautiful new cape, huh? We're not here to be flipping chopping, man. What do you think we are? Made of money? I, I kind of am, actually, right now. Oh, fairy and very stylish little fellow you are. I have something for here that would suit you down to the ground. Let's see how. Oh, yes, perfect. Wow. She's swindling us. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Ollie. Uh, uh, yep. Roll up, roll up. Find fabrics. Yep. You're gonna tell me you have enthusiasm, but my locket's already filled with it. Uh, what is it, young man? Are you interested in some of our fine fabrics? It's not that. I was wondering if you'd maybe let us borrow a little of your enthusiasm. Now... You would think that she would try to haggle for that enthusiasm. Why don't you just say the funniest things? My enthusiasm and my smile always come for free. Take as much as you'd like. Oh, yep, too full. Can't get that enthusiasm. I know the place I need to be is right there, but... I want to go talk to these people. Figure out their problem. It's a tragedy. How will my poor darling dear ever survive? Something to matter, love. My soul... My one, my only dearest husband has traveled to Golden Grove in search of delicious mushrooms, but he has forgotten to take his lunch. Knickers, there's a disaster. Yeah, I guess it's kind of bad, huh? He must be really hungry by now. He, well, I mean, all the chests have sandwiches in it. He just has to find one. He must, oh, he must, and the wild beasts of the forest prevent me from delivering it to him myself. Oh, whatever shall I do? Golden Grove, huh? That's the forest we came through, the one with all those giant mushrooms. That's it, Ollie boy. For title first, the fabulous flora and fauna. It's a proper good place to go in search of a bit of grub. Also, you're familiar with Golden Grove? 
then I must make a most urgent request of you. Deliver him food. I'm sure emergency deliver. Yep. If when we head up over there again, we'll do it. My little hero here, this is the lunch I prepared. Let's eat it. You must not be tempted to try it, no matter how delicious it may smell. It's a meal for lovers only. Lover's lunch basket. It's for those that love. Ollie does not know such love. Oh, this will never do. It is bad for business. Very bad. What's the matter, ma'am? The desert is filled with the marooning boneheads. The traveling merchant who brings us fresh goods are being attacked. I fear that soon our line of supplies will be severed entirely. If only there was someone who could rid us of those skeletal scout. Why didn't you make this a bounty board mission, ma'am? Seems like they're in a proper pickle, eh, Ollie boy? Shall we help them? Yep. I'll help you, ma'am. I'll beat those boneheads for you. Come now, child. We are not in so much trouble that we need to send the likes of you to your doom. No, man, we don't understand. He's got me, Drippy, Lord High Lord of the Fairies, looking after him. He'll be right as rain. And what exactly will you do, little man? Gnaw upon their shin bones until they hop away. Hee hee hee. Oh, you, the flippin' cheek of your flippin' shin bones indeed. Ollie boy, our pride's on the line here. We need to better these bony beggars good and proper. Sure, let's do it, Mr. Drippy. Oh, very well, defeat ten boneheads, and that will be enough to allow our suppliers to reach us. I don't like you, ma'am. You're very rude. I like these fountains, though. Oh, and Ghost Boy. Howdy. I have to really use the spell again? Uh, and it costs five magic. Nice to see you again. Did you have fun crossing the desert? I don't remember what I tried to make him sound like. Fun, it was flipping boiling, man. Boiling for you, maybe, Pipsqueak. I'm a ghost, and ghosts don't feel the heat. So there. What are you doing here, Horace? I'm looking at these fountains. They're amazing. I'm just looking. Oh, they squirt. That's milk. Ew. In the desert? I, I, I'm sorry. Mm. They squirt out milk. All the milk a boy could drink. The what all moon, moon is famous for. I thought they were famous for the babanas. But the spicy smell coming from that flood's food stall is mixing with the smell of the milk. It's strange. Ha! Huh, you think so? I kind of like it. Hey, there are still loads of spells you don't know yet, aren't there, Oliver? Well, I am trying. It's just that my wizard companions kind of, uh, most of the pages are missing. Missing? Oh yeah, I had to give you the page for spirit medium, didn't I? Uh-huh. When Mr. Drippy first gave it to me, the only spell inside was gateway. Really? So the page has been turned out? I bet it was that idiot Shadar is doing. Alright, I suppose I'd better help you fill it back up again, hadn't I? Tidy, there's generous. Maybe I was wrong about you being a singy little midget after all. You can't just say that, Drippy. Well, I'm not just gonna hand a load of pages over. If that's what you're thinking, Oliver will have to prove his wizard and comprehend- Right. I remember this now. Wizard and comprehension skills first. The wizard's companion isn't just full of spells. There are also stories in there, and they were gathered by the sages over the centuries. But those have probably been turned out too. Stories are pretty powerful after all. They might inspire people to stand up to him. Right, I'm gonna give you one to get you started. Have a read, it's one of my faves. Got the Cowardly Prince and the Lion. I don't want this. Did you read the story I gave you? Well, I hope you read it carefully because I've got a question for you, ready? I'm, I just wanna know what the question is so I can skim. There are quite a few characters in the story. Can you remember them all? Tell me, who is the third smallest out of the prince and the Lion King, the Dragon of the East, and the Dragon of the... What? Excuse me? The third smallest? What kind of question is that? I always hate it when in school you would have to like read a story and they would quiz you on the story, but like with the most asinine of questions. I've always had a... I've always... What? It's like one of these this one I've always been very upset from um, a quiz that I had for the Hobbit and I did good on it I mean I liked the Hobbit but it asked what all of the name of the dwarves were and you had to like actually know them it wasn't like multiple choice so you just had to be good at that and like who cares no, like most of the dwarves didn't matter come on what am I doing the third smallest uh this is weak so my boy he did not have the spirit to cry to send it down. When we encountered his uh, prince tried to flee, the lion was like, caught him. He was doomed, but length, at length he began to reconsider. At least I no longer have to become king, thought the prince. My lion, I am the prince. 
since thou hast now shall swallowed me, however, thou must become king instead. Eh? Says lion. Or the lion back to the palace. This actually seems like a fun story. Whenever there was a dispute, the lion would simply growl. Uh, stop complaining, I'll eat you, says lion. And now the dragons, after some time, news reaches king, the two dragons were ravaging the eastern and western edge. I would only assume that the lion would be the third smallest. Upon which the king announced that he should go to smite the dragon himself. But even the fearsome lion stood no chance by defeating uh, my dear stomach dweller, said he then. What in the wide world should I do now? Prince was considering the question and at length provided him with a suitable scheme. Lion had a east, a part of this kingdom that was being ravaged by a large dragon. It roared at its ugly, stupid, dumb face. Uh, the zoom. Dragon, I shall soon slay thee! Fate thee not, for no matter how large thou shalt never... Oh ho, what we shall see upon which the lion halt. From inside, uh, the lion said, Dragon, thou art now the king of the land. Ha <laughs> ha. No he, but then the dragon witnessed the humans around him bowing down in deference. Uh, it has to be the lion then, right? Once uh, he decided to do his royal duty, whereupon he went to the western mountain and slew the other dragon. So the other dragon had been slain, the lion commenced to scratch the inside. Ow, it hurts. Unless if both the dragons are the same size, I don't know. Ah, uh, very well, but the dragon was cunning beast. The prince knew that he would break his promise. The moment the lion was out of his stomach, he therefore had the lion take out the babbling berry that he'd told him to bring with him and place it inside the dragon. This berry was known to make noises that sounded like someone muttering to himself. With the babbling berry in his stomach, the dragon shan't notice when the lion escapes. When the dragon was sleeping, the lion crept out of his gaping mouth, and they left. Uh, the prince was shocked and replied, What well, stomach dweller this time that chemist hints from in there? I would have to take my place. Uh, so now the prince is the king, because the prince was king all along. So I said, lion, I have grown old. Ten years hast thou resided in my stomach, and yet no one's didst thou scratch me or cause me my pain. So I myself did to the dragon, though thou could have done at any time. The courtiers, the subject of this kingdom, did not accept me because I am strong. They accept me because I have given them my all, by which I mean, thou hast given them thine. Thou art the true king of the country, thou lackest not the spirit, I assure thee. In like manner, everyone at the palace beseech Prince Tamaro to become thy king. Okay. Good story. Quick, quick story. So, I'm gonna say probably the lion. Good. Uh, can you remember them all? Third smallest. Probably lion. If not, then I guess the prince would have been it. Definitely not the dragons. That's not right! I mean... And that's if I missed it, but I don't think it specified that the size of the dragons, just that they were big. Uh, unless if it wants me to say, what was his fucking name? Tamalo? Oh no. Oh no. I should have tried Prince first at least, because this is probably not right. Sorry. Let me try Prince. If that's not right, then I guess I need to remember his dumb name. Or maybe... Read the question again. This is what you get for trying the skim read. Nothing good comes from skim reading. No? You don't know the answer. I thought I knew the answer. Dang dumb book. My, uh reading comprehension skills weren't very good because I thought when he said like the third smallest it meant like from big to small so like the dragons were big and then the line was second down but uh, I, it, that's not the case it was from tiny baby prince to lion to the dragon of the west very impressive you just answered wrong 20 times Oliver but whatever, there was a comprehension must be almost as good as mine. I just didn't comprehend what you were saying, Horus. Oh, I said I'd help you fill your wizard's companion back up, didn't I? Here. Wow, draw poison. Is that like a heal poison?
Yeah, cure the effects of venom and poison. Thanks, Horus. I suppose it was a bit mean giving you a question like that. Yeah, it was Horus, but you worked it out eventually. And that's what being a wizard is all about. Learning to look carefully at every detail and understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Drippy. Shut up with the wise old man talk, will you? You're no flipping older than Ollie Boy here. Uh, he's a ghost, so, you know. I'm not? No, I don't suppose I am. At least I don't seem to be. What is that supposed to mean? It's strange. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Something really, really important. Never mind. I can't believe how much this place has changed. I'm going to see if the other towns around the world are as different these days. I think I'll head somewhere with a bracing sea breeze next. I might not be able to feel the wind on my face, but I can still enjoy the view. You, you were talking about how you can smell stuff, though, Horus. That's like good cold, dead eyes you have right there. See you soon. I feel like he should have faded away. Uh, I also thought that maybe there was someone else I needed to talk to, but I don't think so. I don't think I talked to that person over on the other side. Oh, let me get this chest, though. Wow, I got money. Might as well grab this, too. And a sour sundae. Yeah, m milk in the desert. Like, a fountain of milk is already bad enough, but in a hot desert? That, uh, that sounds terrible. That sounds like the worst possible combination in the world. I don't like it at all. Okay, well, let me talk to this guy first. Oh, uh, it's no good. I just can't be bothered. Leave me alone. What's happened to you? You were full of beans. Why is everyone full of beans here? When we set out from Ding Dong Dell. Is everything okay? Well, we're traveling merchants, you see, but since we arrived at Alamamoon, my husband has completely lost his will to sell. Yeah, I thought she said will to live for a minute. And after we went to all the troubles of leaving Ding Dong Dell to travel the world and earn enough money to open our dream shop. Who cares about the stupid shop? Selling things is such a lot of effort. Let's not bother anymore. Such a lot of effort. Well, this doesn't look too good, does it? I can understand. I know that he needs a fucking <laughs> enthusiasm or something. And you're like dogs. Uh, I can see you're doing gonna be no use. I'll just have to work for the two of us then, won't I? That or we could mend his broken heart on hubby. One hubby sized helping of enthusiasm to do it. It should, hmm? Yes, we have to cure him. We can't just leave him like this. In it though. Let us go wiggle some find us some enthusiasm, you know, and whatnot, eh? Give it to him. Give him the juice. How you feeling, boy? Hmm, where am I? What am I say? Oh, that's it. We need to make enough money to open our dream shop. Let's get to work. Darling, you're back to your old self. Thank goodness. Sorry, my darling. Did I worry you? I'm so, so sorry. I'm better now. Let's go to work, shall we? Neato, we cured him. Thank you so much for helping me out. You deserve an extra special free gift. Yeah, we got blindness be gone. And some money. That's all good. Good. Okay, let's suck your enthusiasm out now, lady. Yep, yep, give it to me. Take it. Yep, good. What a strange feeling, now I feel even more ready to sell, sell, sell. Uh, and what's your problem? Who are you? Your problem. You're like the king of the babanas. Alright. Let's get this going. Excuse me. Are you Mr. Rashad? Yes, I am. Mr. Rashad, sir, I need you to teach me magic. I need you to teach me the most powerful spells there are, so I can defeat Shadar. Defeat Shadar? You? Yes, sir. You're crazy. Your journey has been wasted. I no longer practice the magic arts. Huh? Can't you, like, give me a no. page or something, though? I thought you were one of the four great sages who knows everything there is to know about magic. It matters not what I was. I use magic no more. Is she... 
on drugs. What do you want? Who are you? Jeepers. The poor thing's broken hearted, looks like. <sighs> Shudara stole a piece of her heart. It was my fault. I defied him, and to punish me, he did this. That is why I fight no longer. I cannot risk my child's life. I will not. We must accept our fate and live out our days in peace. Is this really peace, though, mister? Mr. Rashad, sir, you're wrong. She wouldn't want this. <clears throat> you don't even know her, man. Because a piece of her heart was stolen. It's because you gave up fighting. Because you gave up on everything. That's why she's in pain. Hmm. You are sure of this? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, is he really going along with this? I see. The light is out of her eye. I think that's magic. Yeah, see? Huh? Be gone! You're making a mistake. I wasn't trying to. Well, he wasn't wrong. It looks like Shadar's stolen a part of the poor Dab's heart. Then we have to help her. We have to make her heart whole again. Nah, looks like I said this is different. Huh? Her heart's not just broken, it's closed. What does that mean, Mr. Drippy? What does that mean? It's like this, see? She's not just had a part of her heart stolen, she's closed it up tight too, to keep the rest safe like. So, before we can think about replacing what's missing, we'll have to open it back up again, innit? And how do we do that? We go to your world. If we find whoever she's connected to by there, we can work out what's going on with her by her. So, we head over you away and find her soulmate. All right. Let's do it. Right, though. Back to you, a world it is. Now we're going to have to spend 20 minutes with Oliver not knowing that she looks a bit like Starry Mary. We're just going to have to bumble around. Who are you? I, I don't know. She just had another, like, European voice. I don't... I'm gonna have to listen to her talk again to find some semblance of anything to give her. You would think Oliver would like change his clothes to something that matches the setting when he does this, though. So I just start the search, eh? You remember how this works, in it, Ollie boy? It's all about spotting the similarities. Somewhere around by here, is someone who's similar to young Esther, Eth Ether. Esther? In some way. Now what girl do you know? What girls do you know? Only the one, really. G -g -g girls I guess the two. I don't really talk to girls. I mainly talk to Phil. Crikey, well that's no good, is it? How are we gonna do this then? Uh, I'm sure there's somebody she reminds me of. Can't quite put your finger on it, is it? Never mind. If brain work won't work, leg work will. Let's go for a stroll around town and see if we can spot Esther's soulmate. That way shall we. Okay, Mr. Drippy, let's go find that girl. Did... Did anyone specifically say what her name was? I don't remember the guy actually saying her name. How does Drippy know her name? I could be totally wrong there. Just gotta head down to where the star is. Hey, I just thought... What's up, Mun? You having a nice time thinking about girls, is it? Oh, jeez. No. Drippy, don't tell people. When I used to come here to Phil's garage, there was a girl. She was always looking at us from her window. From her window, it sounds like a proper shrinking violet. I guess so. That's the window up there. Oh, it's a ghost! I think that's the same reaction she had when we saw her that night. When Oliver's mom died. Remember? That's why Oliver's doing this. Oh, that's her, Mr. Drippy. Flippin' heck, Ollie boy. Why didn't you think of her straight away? She's a spitting image of her, eh? Moon. Huh? Oh, jeez. Oliver! Who do you flippin' think you brought, kid? The great sage's daughter, ain't it? The one who's obviously her flippin' soulmate. 
Is that obvious? I never noticed. I don't make eye contact with girls, Drippy. You sure have good eyes, Mr. Drippy. She was only in the window for a second. Yeah, but she's also, you know, like the only blonde girl that like looks the same. Never underestimate the razor sharp eyes of a fairy, my boy. Spot a speck of dust on the head of a pin I could. Anyway, it's her, no mistake. Let's go and barge our way into our bedroom. <laughs> Break through the house. Uh, okay. I'm gonna use fire spells to open the door. Actually, is Philip around? He better feel- Nah. This is actually his workshop. He owns it. I didn't realize it said Philip's workshop on it. Uh, before when... He killed my mom. Um, <clears throat> let's go. Uh, let's go talk to Terry Mary. How's that dog doing? Just barking. I wish I could get a closer look at that dog. I want to see its face, like full up. Let me in. Hmm. It's no good. There's no answer. Use spring lock. There's something the matter, dear. There's nobody home, you know. Eh? Is she a ghost? Uh, I need to speak to the girl who lives here. You're a friend of Myrtle's. Oh, you poor dear. You must be awfully worried about her. Huh? Oh my, you haven't heard? Well, just between you and I, think. Oh, great, the gossip is talking to us. Things haven't been going so well for Myrtle's family lately. H how come? Her father works very... Every hour of every single day, nothing but work, work, work. He's never at home anymore. Such a shame. Rusty was always such a devoted father. But something has happened to him. He's changed. I hear him shouting at them through the walls. Oh, jeez. Gotta deal with a dysfunctional family. I don't know how poor Betty copes, let alone young Myrtle. Such a shame. Betty is... That's right, dear. She's Rusty's wife. And she's every bit as devoted to him as she always was. Why well, only this morning I heard her promising to bring his lunch to him down. This seems a bit too heavy for a ten-year-old boy. Uh, down in the garage. All the love she pours into those sandwiches. It's enough to break your heart. Why I'm welling up just thinking about it. Such a kind soul, poor, poor Betty. I have half a mind to tell that Rusty Cartwright just how lucky he is. Maybe you should tell the police, ma'am. Oh, I, I guess all he's doing is yelling and not actually like physical abuse but geez or just listen to me gossiping on and on to a 10 year old child do ignore me dear i'm just a silly old woman say hello to myrtle for me won't you crikey sounds like things are none too rosy in the cartwright house eh mr drippy this seems a bit too heavy for me we can't leave her like that we have to help her we have to help myrtle that's easier said than done, Ollie boy. She's not coming out for a chat, and we're not getting in unless we go magicking the door open. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we should use magic. Yeah! I'm the only one who knows how. I'm the only one who can go in there and speak to her. I mean, people know how to actually pick locks, though. You sure you want to be doing this, Mon? When Mom died, I... If you hadn't taken me over to your world when I thought I was all alone, if you hadn't helped me, I'd still be alone right now. That's why we have to help Myrtle. If we don't, she'll be left staring out of her window forever, all alone. That's justify- That's justification enough for a bit of breaking and turning my book. Let's get in there. I don't know if the police will agree, but okay. Okay, Mr. Drippy. This is gonna turn into, uh... Until they bring the streetcars back. What are we gonna find in the freezer, Drippy? Drippy. What are we gonna find in the freezer? Huh, it won't open. Yeah, that's proper weird. A rubbish little lock like that should have proper and done easy peasy. Hmm? What's wrong, Mr. Drippy? It's this door, man. There's an evil power protecting it. Your spell didn't fail. It was repelled by a malevolent force. What? Repelled? Jeepers. Must be a girl, and it. She's the soulmate of a sage's daughter, after all. You th think so what do we do we gotta just climb into the window i'll tell you what we don't do carry on trying to get in by the front door it's not exactly polite just barging into people's houses anyways you're right i guess we'll find have to find some other way 
It's a good thing there's a giant star marker on the map, or else I would never know. <gasps> Wait. The dog knows how. Oh, ghost girl knows how. That was... P. Hey, maybe. Eh, what's going on, early boy? What are you talking about P's for? Maybe P knows something. Eh, what the flipping heck's going on? Maybe that dog knows something. Oliver! <laughs> I, I knew she was gonna say it before she even did. Oliver, you have to go in there. Oliver! I, I know, but it's locked, right? Did she open it? It's open. I guess she got the magic. How to flip? Did you do another spell or something? No, it wasn't me. It was P. Uh, she's gone. Huh? Where'd she? Never mind all that. Let's get in there, shall we? There's a damsel in this chest up there, and this is turning into a persona right now. Gonna have to steal her heart or something. Who are you? My name is Oliver. Don't worry, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm a kid from right here in Motorville. Always get to start a conversation with that. I know. Not crazy. I've seen you. You have? I'm sick. I can't leave this room. If I go outside, it hurts. So all I can do is look out at the world from my window. That's why they call us Steady Mary. Shh. Don't worry, man. No one can hear me by you. I can talk as loud as I want. Yes. That's why they call me Steady Mary. Yes. Hey, can she hear me? That's what they call me around here. But you knew that already, huh? I do. F uh, I f actually uh, feel really bad about this whole situation. I think I'm weird, don't you? No, I, I don't. I mean, have you seen the way Oliver is dressed? It's okay, I don't mind. I think he's a bit weirder than you, you are. Go before my father comes home. Uh. Oi, come here a sec. This is proper weird. I've looked as hard as I know how, but she doesn't seem sick at all. She's as fit as a fiddle, in fact. You mean, you can tell? I'm Lord High Lord of the Fairies, and I, of course I can tell. She's got so that weird, like, sun disease from that one... Sickness, yeah, uh, what was that gone. movie called? Sun the Visitors? The, the, like, the ghosts in the house mm. thing? What is it? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm gonna come see you again. Okay, Myrtle? Huh? Well, if you can't leave your room, I'll come to you instead. That way we can be friends. How does that sound? Oliver... You can't. Huh? My father won't allow it. He... You should leave. Like, I think they've basically said everything except for that he beats you. Which, again, is very stressful. Just like you said, Mr. Drippy, it's almost like Myrtle and Esther are the same person. Crazy, Oliver. Is that really the thing that you're worried about right now? Aren't it, though? They could be twins, man. I knew they were soulmates at the moment I laid eyes on her. But she ain't broken harder. There's something else stopping her from getting better. It must be her parents. Her family is. That old gossip is to be believed. Yeah, sounds like her folks ain't getting on too well. I mean, it sounds like it's more the father than the parents. Like, together, but okay. But our family squabble's really the kind of thing we want to go get mixed up in Ollie Boy. Not really, but I feel like we have to. Maybe not, but we have to help Myrtle. Yeah. Family is important. It's everything. Well, since you put it like that, go on then. Let's help the poor dab out. Next stop, Rusty Shop. Let's go, Mr. Trippy. Just, let's... Let's see how they handle the father. I'm sure the father is v gonna be great. This here must be Rusty's garage. Got a bad feeling in my lantern about this. You'd best make sure you're good and ready before you go in. Uh, okay, Mr. Got a. Uh, I need to go into this one. I'm gonna have a boss fight with her dad as he tries to beat me for trying to tell him that he's a bad father. I don't think my lemur can help me here. Things are getting real heavy. 